Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're gathered here for the 79th um, winter meeting of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. More than 230 mayors are here this uh, winter for our meeting. Uh, we're here at the capital city of our, and the nation's capital to, to stress to President Obama and his cabinet and Congress that our cities are in the middle of a job emergency that demands decisive and swift action. In many cities and metropolitan areas all across our country, the unemployment rate continues to be in a double digit. So we are calling on Congress and the administration as well as the private sector to work closer together with mayors to help us retain jobs in our cities, grow jobs in our cities, and attract more jobs to our cities. We have presented the nation's mayors this morning with a civility accord and are asking everyone here to sign that agreement. We believe that this is something that we must raise the awareness not only of ourselves, but our citizens, on what it means for us to have civil discourse, to understand that we can have difference of opinion, but we must do it in such a way that we continue to have civility in our society. Through this accord, we are encouraging political leaders at all levels of government the mayors are taking the lead, but we're saying to all levels of government, choose words wisely and to commit to work together in the spirit of civility for the good of our citizens and our country. We see this accord as an important step forward and hope that it will inspire Congress to put jobs creation jobs retention and attraction at the top of their agenda and to work collaboratively. When you look around, you will see that mayors know what collaboration is. We do not know what partisan is. We know about bipartisanship because we are nonpartisan. We work together for the good of our people. They're the ones who elect us to office. They're the ones who are telling us, get the job done, stay focused, Make sure you have a vision for the future. Include us in your civic engagement discussion. And then let us go forth and work together to achieve those goals and objectives. Prepared for us by Global Insights, the report shows that the rate of unemployment in our nation, uh, the rate we are going to is going to be about 300, is, is double digit. And this is in our 363 metro areas, and uh, the un unemployment rate is higher than 10%. The nation's mayors recognize that families all over the country are suffering, and we need to continue to work together. Mayor Daly will speak here at this press conference, but in there he talked to us about there are other ways for us to do this, and he will address that. Our cities and our metro areas are the center of our nation's economy, and that's what we should be focused on. Jobs are in our cities. Our people live in our cities. And so we need to work together and build a vision for our country to be competitive on a global stage. stage. And ladies and gentlemen, it is all about jobs. One of the things that I've talked about is that we need to make sure that we put in place an infrastructure, an economic infrastructure that helps our people get retrained for jobs of the 21st century. And then what we as mayors do is to create the kind of environment to make sure that those jobs will come to our city, will stay there and come to our city. 
so that our people have the opportunities and a pool for them to get these jobs. So one, we have to create the infrastructure and then create the policies to make sure that those things are accomplished. So I thank you all for being here and uh, for listening to us. I'd like to now call on Vice President, Mayor of Los Angeles, Viragosa. Mayor, where is he? All righty. So then I will then ask our uh, Tucson Mayor, Bob Walkup. Uh, here he is. Yay, there, you're here. Good, thank you. Please, Mayor Walkup. Well, it's a great pleasure to, uh, to, to be here today. Uh, I cannot tell you, I, I, I tried to briefly kind of cover what uh, the emotion was happening in the, uh, in the great city of Tucson over the last couple of weeks, and it's very difficult to do in, in a very short time. But I just want to amplify the impact of the President of the United States mm -hmm. and the impact of this great body of mayors on helping our city, which is a great city. We were, we've been a great city for hundreds of years. We're a great city today, and we're going to continue to be a great city. But it was on Sunday, two days after the, uh, the event, that we really started talking as mayors about the importance of civility. There, there is scientific proof uh, that there is a linkage between civility and outcome. Outcome in our schools, outcome in, in, in our workplace, outcome for our people. I mentioned it just lightly, and by the way, I'm really impressed <laughs> with Mayor Daly. And, and, and I've got to tell you, Mayor, that it, it's that kind of enthusiasm and energy that brings mayors together because we are, the, we are out in front. It is our job to be out in front. But at that moment, Gabrielle Giffords, who is the kindest, most loving person you'll ever meet, ever meet. Fun to be with. She was not afraid to stand on a, a curbside and, and say, come on, let's talk about government. Every single person that was there was a kind and loving person. Christina Taylor Green, the nine-year-old, was brought there because she loved Gabrielle and she aspired to do what she does to lead and, and to understand government. That's why she was there. But there was one angry, mad person that carried a gun that didn't care about anything or anybody. But I'm very proud of the Conference of, of Mayors uh, endorsing and creating the Civility Accord. But we can't let it stop there. We've got to convert that into actions how we govern, how we interrelate. Let's take it to the schools. Let's, let's take it to throughout our communities. Let's get them involved. Our young people in school have got to put down the cell phones. By the way, I don't, I don't know how many of you have grandchildren that, that oh, sorry, <laughs> or children. But how you communicate. How can you communicate in a loving way if you're texting, right? <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain thing that we must do. We must link this to science to make a change in who we are and how we govern. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a great city. Gabby's on, a, on the mend. We have almost everybody out of the hospital. The, the city is trying to recover. And being here today is very, very meaningful to me. And, and my family, and to the city of Tucson. Thank you very much. And now, um, Vice President of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Mayor Viragosa, and then after Mayor, uh, Mayor Viragosa, uh, I'd like to call on Mayor Daly to come forward. So if, I know that he's stuck over there, so if he can work his way this way. <laughs> Mayor Viragosa. Thank you, Mayor Couts. And first of all, let me... Um, let me acknowledge and thank Mayor Walkup uh, today. Uh, I've been coming uh, to the U.S. Conference of Mayors now for uh, some five years, and I dare say I've, I've never participated uh, in a U.S. Conference of Mayors event that was as meaningful 
and timely and important, not just to our cities, but to the nation. Uh, and I said uh, to a few people as I walked out uh, that nobody uh, could have done it better uh, than Mayor Walkup did it today, speaking from the heart, uh, speaking uh, to the hearts and minds of the American people uh, in describing what happened uh, in Tucson and in calling uh, on our nation's leaders, uh, on our community, uh, on every American uh, to engage in civility, uh, to reach out uh, a hand of friendship, uh, to begin a, a new conversation in America. And so, Mayor Waka, thank you again uh, for um, asking all of us uh, to sign a civility accord. And I, I look forward to every single mayor uh, signing on to that accord as well. And of course, uh, I've said, um, you know, there, if there was one person I wanted to meet when I got elected as mayor of Los Angeles, uh, it was Mayor uh, Daly. And uh, back then, uh, and uh, I continue to this day to say uh, that he is America's greatest mayor. Uh, and not just because uh, he's been around uh, 21, 22 years as mayor. If you look at Chicago, uh, one of the great American cities, and you see uh, the force of his uh, personality and his imprint uh, on education, on the landscape of that great city, uh, on the design of that city. Uh, I think we're all very, very proud uh, to call him our leader and, and our friend. And so uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a very important opportunity for all of us to meet with federal officials, to uh, advocate for investment in our cities, uh, for the partnership uh, that is so important at a time in America uh, when the economy is where it is and, and the opportunities for growth are in our metropolitan area. So, President Counts, thank you uh, for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Vice President Villaraigosa. <laughs> Mayor Daly. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Counts. Uh, I want to thank all the mayors again for this wonderful conference as we roll up our sleeves and we meet our senators, our newly elected senators, our congressmen, and, and to talk about the story that mayors have done. We have balanced our budget. Uh, uh, we have really cut our budget. We're on diets. We understand that people are suffering, and we have to suffer with them. We can't overspend. Uh, we cannot put people in debt. And so we're going to tell our story. It is an important story to be told because mayors are where action is. We have to make the decisions. And this morning, a number of mayors through the Brooklyn Institute met at wonderful Chinese investments. And they talk about the federal and state governments, but they talk about working with mayors. That was the most impressive. They want to be able to work with mayors. And we have to roll up our sleeves and, and do not allow the barriers of our local laws, our rules and regulations to affect their investments. At the same time, keeping health, safety, and environment is important. And the president just announced a, a committee to look at these rules and regulations that affect not only private investments, but affect us as mayors, the cost factor of doing business with the government. Now, I really believe there's a change coming here in America because of the recession and because the housing market and the un unemployment is so high. I think America is going to roll up their sleeves, admit we have a problems, and I really believe the, the salvation will be, and the answers are right here in mayors, because we've seen it, we've done it, and I really believe it's a great asset that we can bring to the federal government about what we've accomplished and what we can do together to the betterment of our cities and our country. Thank you. Past President, Mayor of Charleston, Joe Riley. Thank you very much, Madam President. The, uh, the, uh, the presence of uh, Mayor Walkup and Mayor Daly uh, on our, uh, at our program and at the dais today uh, is an interesting reminder about the job of mayor. Uh, the mayor is selected by the citizens of their town or city to, to be their leader. Uh, we're elected to address specific problems and challenges. 
But we are elected, as these two mayors have shown, in length of tenure, extraordinary leadership, and one at a critically challenging time in our country's history, are, are elected to take energy from our citizens and lead them during good times, and more important, lead them during difficult times. Uh, what we saw in Tucson was such a, a poignant and powerful reminder of the capacity of a mayor, of a great mayor, when everything in their community in an instant was turned upside down to, to bring order and, and understanding and solace and leadership that, that was transformative. So, Mayor Walker, I, I thank you for your wonderful example uh, to our country and a reminder to us of the, of the duties and the opportunities that our job gives us. And, and for Mayor Daley, you know, the thing that uh, uh, I, there are so many things that have always impressed about Mayor Daley, but he is so connected to his citizens. It's, it's, he gets strength from them. When, when Mayor Daley says the city of Chicago, and I can't say it as well as he can, of course, um, in his mind, you can see he's seeing the few million people, the citizens that he represents, and that, that they are continually teaching and, and instructing and guiding him. Uh, it has been, and, and it was said in the video, Mayor Daley from small cities, medium cities, large cities, has been such a wonderful friend and mentor and, and inspiration. Uh, just listening to him or seeing what has happened in Chicago, an enormous uh, gift to every mayor and thereby every city in our country. The, um, we, we come here today where we are in our cities and, and that is uh, the, the challenge of the, of the economic recession from which we are pulling out of. And I think the first point is important to make is that the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act and the, the recent accord uh, led by President Obama have had the effect of stemming the, the downturn. And in all of our cities, I know in mine, I, we feel the, the positive benefit of those investments, the jobs that were created, the, the uh, encouragement that it gave our community, the resources that we have. It, 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 uh, it closed the wound, and, uh, and now we're in a recovery. And of course, the key part of this is, is on top of that, a job creation. And in uh, one way that jobs are created in a community is through wise infrastructure investments. And, and, and that, I think, will be very, is very important to all of us in one uh, role and, and a relationship between us and the national government, because infrastructure uh, investments create jobs uh, in that process, uh, but they also uh, wisely uh, used and, and strategically uh, situated in a city, then those improvements create new opportunities and create jobs. Uh, I feel uh, optimistic about uh, the way our country is heading and, and in my city where we're heading. It's a tough time to be sure. The unemployment rates are high, but I think with the continued strong partnership uh, with our national government and obviously the hard work on behalf of the mayors of our cities and their citizens, uh, we're, on, uh, we're on the right track. Thank you very much. We'll have uh, one more mayor speak and, uh, and then we'll take questions. And that mayor's uh, City Warren and he heads up, he's chair of our uh, community development uh, and housing task force and he can uh, address the very priority issue that we have with the federal government, and that is CDBG. Mayor Warren. Sarah, you some brief Thank you, President. I'll be very brief. Um, the President talked a little earlier, President Counts, about the importance of CDBG funding. 
Uh, this is critical resource for us as CEOs, as mayors around the country, to ensure that we take care of those most vulnerable, those who need affordable housing, and also stimulate jobs in the economy at this critical time. And I've had, we've had some fantastic conversations with the Secretary of HUD, and I know the President feels strongly about uh, funding of CDBG at this critical time. We're going to be going up uh, to the Hill this afternoon. I'm going to be joined uh, with other mayors that are standing here with me. Uh, Mayor Swearingen, of course, uh, our Vice President, uh, Mayor Vera Garosa, uh, Mayor Nutter, uh, as well as Mayor Pasquillic, and we're going to join other members of Congress to talk about the importance of CDBG funding at this time. So um, I'm going to be also asking, and we're going to be asking that mayors beyond today engage, as President Counts said, their members of Congress and governors throughout the country over the course of the next five to six weeks to really tell the story of what this funding means for our mayors uh, across the country. So I look forward to it, and thank you, uh, President, for allowing me to speak for a few minutes. Thank you. And now questions. Are there any questions for mayors? We have mayors all around who can feel questions. Yes, sir. What are the mayor's concerns that you'd like to see in the transportation bill? You know, one of the people who is most passionate about our transportation agenda, and I'm going to give him the opportunity to speak about that. Uh, I can answer you, but here's, uh, it's our Vice President, Viragosa. And uh, Vice President Viragosa, you want to speak to our issues on uh, transportation? Well, first of all, we had an opportunity, some of us, to meet with uh, the U.S. China Investment Corporation a couple of minutes ago or a couple hours ago, rather. And I can tell you uh, that when you look to China, uh, when you look to Western Europe, even if you look to the developing world, they're engaged in infrastructure uh, investment on a scale and scope that uh, dwarfs what we're doing here in the United States. A $2.2 trillion need, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers. And so what we need is a partnership. Uh, we need a partnership with the federal government uh, to invest directly with cities and metropolitan areas. Uh, we take umbrage with the idea that we have to go through the states. Uh, we, we'd like to have a direct uh, federal partnership. Uh, one of the things we're talking about is that many of the cities who are here are, are, are already uh, making their own investments. We want to leverage that. Uh, with the federal government, expand, as an example, the TIFIA program, which is a program uh, to provide loans uh, for uh, low-cost loans, uh, the QTIB, uh, which is a quality transit improvement bond, uh, an opportunity for public-private partnerships to bond uh, and create jobs now. So those are some of the things uh, that we want to do. Obviously, we'd like to see uh, the federal government finally pass a surface transportation bill. Uh, we want to we want to get to work, and we want to make sure that our cities are doing what we need to do uh, in terms of infrastructure investment to create jobs and uh, to compete uh, around the world. Anyone else? Yes, please. <laughs> I, I think, unfortunately, many of these smaller cities have huge financial problems. They're going to reorganization or bankruptcy because they really can't afford uh, uh, the expenses uh, of their operating on a daily basis and also the pension obligations. And so you're going to see that more and more. And, and of course, uh, how do we get out of this? I mean, uh, uh, in my, my, my viewpoint is that uh, all of us uh, as mayors have to come together and it's not the government, the federal government can only print so much money. They can only borrow so much money. We have to go to the private sector uh, to, to, to rebound in regards to infrastructure, but also to restructure many of these uh, local and state governments. I mean, they're in serious financial problems. And that affects our ratings continually on all the bonds and what we borrow. And so there is a dilemma ha happening in, a, in, in all local governments but where the federal government is exempted from this. 
They don't have to balance their budget. Uh, uh, they can borrow as much money, and they can print money. And so I really believe is we need the private investment to come in to help cities and their infrastructure, and not just two years, but a 25-year infrastructure program, not only for Chicago, but for the region. And that's what we look at. But these are serious financial problems for many of the cities, especially the smaller cities that can't deal with the day-to-day -day cost of government. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it, sure. Questions? Yes. We'll go to Florida. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the mayor of Pembroke Pines, Florida, 153,000 people. Our property values dropped $11.5 million. That was a huge, huge deficit. Now our property appraiser are telling us that it's starting to remain a little flat, but those cities that have huge condos will still, you know, might see some deficit in the property taxes. We're just on a rebound. We're, we're hoping that it can't go any lower, but we went through a massive, as Mayor Daly said, restructuring of our city with all of our finances to get around it. Nobody saw it coming. It's just a tsunami that you couldn't prepare for, but we're mayors and elected officials, and we do deal with it. We had $19 million in concession and employee concessions, number one. As the mayor said, in pensions and all those, we just cut back in capital. We haven't spent for police cars, fire trucks, just putting off those things that you try to put off for a year to hope that this law go away. Next. Any other questions? Yes, please. Daily? Well, I think uh, many of us have uh, counseling services uh, through various programs. But again, what is happening is they purchase their home at, they say, 300000 It's valued at 700000 Now the, the, uh, the uh, going price is one fifty, And that's, that's their problem. How can people pay for their real estate taxes? How can they pay for the expenses when they lost a job or someone lost a job in their home? This is a national issue. It's not going to go away in one or two years. We have to reevaluate the, uh, the, the, how the, uh, the system uh, gave valuation and appraisals. I mean, if I, if I look at all this, especially in Chicago, you talk about criminal fraud. Criminal fraud appraisals, mortgage houses, criminal fraud of lawyers, all involved that everybody got paid, and who really hold in a bag was a poor homeowner and the renter, and that's really, really unfortunate. And the federal government has never really focused on the criminal fraud aspect uh, of this whole mortgage crisis. And to my viewpoint, uh, uh, we have a long way to go in this crisis. Yeah, and let me just mention yeah. that, uh, as you know, the Obama administration uh, had uh, sponsored an initiative, the Housing Stabilization Program, and many of us were beneficiaries of those programs. Those were homes that had gone in foreclosure. Our housing departments working uh, with the nonprofit development community can buy those homes, rehab them, provide affordable housing. Obviously, we'd like to see that program continue uh, to uh, grow. I do want to say something about this default situation, however. While uh, there's no question you'll see some uh, cities in default, the diff I think what Mayor Daly was emphasizing, the difference between us and the federal government is that they can print money. Uh, the states balance their budget oftentimes on the backs on the of back cities, of counties, and school districts. We actually have to balance a budget and I know that there, there is no scenario it, uh, where the city of Los Angeles, and I know that I, I speak for the mayors here, we're going to do everything we have to do uh, to balance our budgets. That's why when Mayor Daley talks about this issue of pension reform, that's not a Democrat or Republican issue. Uh, the fact is our pensions aren't sustainable. The fact is there is a way out if our employees work with us uh, to provide the concessions we need uh, so that we can uh, put our cities back on a sound financial footing. Uh, and the fact is, uh, the federal government and the states are going to have to understand that when you generate the kind of economic might that the cities do, metropolitan areas, some 90 percent of the GDP, uh, they have an investment in making sure that we're balancing 
our books, that they're partnering with us uh, during this very important crisis. Yeah, Mayor Reardon, my good friend, by the way, was actually the person uh, that picked up uh, the pensions for fire and police. I'm taking him down. We put it on the ballot this year. Uh, I've said a couple of times, and he's a good man, there is no scenario where we will ever be uh, in the B situation. I don't even use that word uh, because uh, we're going to make the tough decisions. Uh, my city council will be looking at civilian uh, pension reform for new employees as well. And I know a lot of our cities are, are doing the same thing. Thank you very much for being with us. And if you have any other questions for any of the mayors, please speak with them directly. Thank you for being here.